Hi, and welcome to lesson three. In this lesson, we're going to look at how you create scrolling and paging. So I've got this blank protopy file set up and ready to go. And I'm just gonna go over to Figma and import some graphics. Um, I'm gonna use the copy and paste option. So I've got this design. I've got these blue squares running across the top and I've got these purpley pink squares running down. So I've got a set of like a carousel for paging and I've got a scroll view. So I'm just going to recreate this in Protopy. So I'm just going to copy the first blue square and I'm just going to go to copy paste and I'm going to copy as SVG. Switch back over to Protopy and I'm just going to do a regular paste. Okay, so I got my first rectangle and I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times. Let's just make some more room here. That should be fine. And I'm just going to shift select all three of these. I'm just going to use the alignment tools here just so I can space them evenly. That's looking good. And you'll notice when you add graphics or duplicate graphics inside of Protopy, it works pretty much the same as other tools. It duplicates above. Now I actually find it a bit weird when I'm working with things. Um, so it's not so much important for this particular one, but I, I prefer it to be in the order of from top to bottom matches left and right. And again, obviously for vertical objects, top to bottom matching top to bottom. And I'm just going to rename these, these layers. I'm just call this image two and this one image three. Okay, so I've got these three graphics. I'm going to group them, which is Command G on the Mac, Control G on Windows, and you can see it's wrapped my three images inside of a container. Okay, that's looking good. And if I select the container, you can see there's this bounding box. So the way scrolling and paging both work is that I need to tell Protopy the area by which I want the, the container to page in this case. So that's actually the area of the single item. So I want this to page by one rectangle at a time. I need to tell it that I only want to have this viewable space of one rectangle. Okay, so, the but before I do that, I'm just going to make sure I've got my container selected and I'm just going to scroll down to this area at the bottom of the properties panel and you can see this option called scroll paging. Okay, so because we're doing a paging option, I'm going to choose paging here. And you can see that when I choose paging, it's uncovered a few extra options for me to deal with. So the first option is how I want to page. So by default, it will, it will set itself to page by container. And that's this container here. And it will use the, like I said, it will use the viewable area of the container. So because I want to, actually we can just test this straight away. Um, if I try and page, you'll see it won't go anywhere. It won't go anywhere because the container is the exact size of all of the objects within it. So there's nothing to page. As far as Protopy is concerned, I can already see all of the objects. So I need to reduce the size of this container so that it's only set to one object. So I'm just going to drag the side of the container roughly to where I think the, the, the object area is going to be. So something like this probably looks pretty good. Okay, so if I go over to my preview window now, you can see that I've actually got some paging going on. It's got the typical paging action. So if I pull it, it will bounce back until I get over the hump. But you can see that as I page, they're not really in the center, which is a bit strange. And that's because you can see this area is kind of off center. I can probably bring it in a little bit more. Maybe it's something like this. Let's try that. Okay, so you can now see that the, the paging is working, but it's effectively paging off, off center. But, you know, you can see, we can probably just move our container to the center. That will certainly help. You can see when you move objects in Protopy, you get these guidelines as well, which is quite helpful. 
And if I move it to the center here, and now if I try it, you'll see that that should look okay. So that's how you create a standard paging container. Okay, so I want to also create a scroll view. So you can imagine I've got this, this, this design where I've got a scrollable view and it's, it has a paging container inside of it, but it's also got a scroll view as well. So I'm going to go back over to my Figma file. I'm going to grab my pinky purpley graphic. I'm just going to do the same thing, copy as SVG. Come back to Protopy and do a regular paste. And I'm just going to locate this somewhere underneath. And again, I'm going to duplicate this a bunch of times. Cool. And the same as before, I'm just going to shift select all of the graphics. And by this time, I'm going to space them evenly on the vertical. And I'm going to group them. And I'm going to call this scroll. Cool. Now, obviously, I could rename these the same as I, I did before, but I won't waste the time um, showing you that. It doesn't really, we don't really need to do that for this particular demo. But eventually, effectively, I've got my scroll view. And as the as as with the paging container, the first thing I need to do is turn on scrolling. So I'm going to choose this middle option, and you can see that scroll defaults to vertical because that's mostly the way we scroll. Okay. And again, like the paging container, I need to set the bounding box to be much smaller so it knows what to scroll by. Scrolls are a little bit easier to work out. I want it to scroll within the view area of the screen. So that's pretty easy. So if I just try that, you can see, okay, so that's now scrolling, 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 but it's scrolling past our paging container, which is a bit strange. Um, and that's because our paging really needs to be inside of our scroll. So actually let's just rename this paging to make that a little bit easier to see. Okay, so there's a really easy fix for this. I'm just going to grab my paging container. I'm just gonna drag it into my scroll container. So I'm gonna nest it inside. Okay, so if I now scroll, you can see because my paging container is inside, my scroll container is just going to disappear off screen. So now I've got a vertical scroll but inside I've still got my paging container. So that still works. So we've now got our two types of scrolling and paging working together. Okay, so there's um, a few more things I can show you here. So scrolling also, you can see I've got this bounding box. And actually, if you notice, I was, I was over here scrolling and you can see that nothing was happening. And that's because my bounding box is actually different because originally we, we set it before we put the paging inside, but now um, we've actually got the paging inside, but effectively the paging is actually at minus 281. So it's completely outside of the bounding box. So we want to make that bounding box move that further up. So it's the whole container. And we actually want to move all of this down. A really quick way of doing that because we've got various things going on is just to temporarily group this. We can then change the Y to zero. Um, we can actually leave it grouped, but you can effectively ungroup it. And we're, we've got everything moved into the correct position. So if we now try it, we can see that we can scroll and we can, we can pick up the scroll from anywhere because it will only register the scroll on the bounding box. We can actually see our bounding box is too long now. So we need to just again, bring that back in. So let's just make sure we've got that selected. Oh, actually, no, that's because I had the wrong one selected. So that's absolutely fine. So it's in the correct position. All good. Whew. Okay, so we can see now that we've got our scrolling going on and we've got our paging going on. Okay, uh, one more thing I want to show you is that you might not want to, let me just see if this is. So this kind of scrolls off the top of the screen and it comes from the bottom of the screen but maybe we don't want that to, to happen. Maybe we want it to be masked. So one of the ways you can mask objects inside of Protopy is by, so if we select our scroll option here and we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can choose this clip sublayers. Now clip sublayers now is going to hide everything outside of our bounding box. You can see now we've got this weird cutoff here. 
So we probably want to make this a bit wider and we can move things around, just kind of recenter it a little bit. But now it's going to cut off at the top of the screen. So we can see we've got that cut off there. So if that's something you want to do, we can just pull this up even further to make it even more obvious. There you go. So we've now masked as well our scrolling container. Okay, um, other things you can do with scrolling. So you've got by default the standard iOS over scroll, which is gives you that little bounce when you get to the bottom of the screen. You can turn that off if you wish. You can also have the default positioning of the scroll start at a certain position. So you can just type a default position in here. Okay, so this about wraps up scrolling and paging inside of Protopie. As you can see, it's pretty easy to do, pretty simple, pretty in line with the way you do scrolling and paging in other apps such as Figma Sketch and Adobe XD. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll bring this particular lesson to a close and I'll see you hopefully in the next lesson.